Chapter 4. So how do we get this type of carefulness? How do we acquire that? How can we have it as part of our personality? Learning Torah is what brings you to the level of carefulness. Why? 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 Yes, why? Because there are moral lessons within the Torah that teach you um, what not to do in the physical world. Teach you to be perfect. Teach you to be perfect. No, not perfect. So the idea is this. Yeah, of course. The idea, Shlemut is, is completeness, perfection. So there, he's right and right. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> what? It gives you a ladder to be perfect, but it was understandable that you won't be perfect. It still no, no, you to be perfect. but it Just moves. You don't learn. Correct. Just because you can't reach to that level of perfection, but there's no certainly. Ever be perfect. Nobody? So you want to talk about Moshe perfect? Rabbeinu? Hey, he wasn't hit allowed into the land. Hit the stone. What did he do? Hit, hit the stone. He hit the stone. He lost faith in the Jewish people. Mm. It's not because he. he, he what, which caused him to hit the stone? Yeah. He didn't go to in, into Israel, which he was meant to. But oh, wait a second. What is the, but what is the goal of living a Torah life? Entering the land of Israel? No. I'm asking you now, listen to this question. What is the goal in living a Torah life? Entering the land of Israel, is that the goal? No. Did he meet this goal? Did, he, did Moshe Rabbeinu meet the goal of living a life of Torah? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, come on. Now. Argument over. Checkmate. Actually, the answer the Ramchal gives is different than both of yours, Yogi. The Ramchal says that the reason you should learn Torah is because it includes, it tells us the, the severity and the um, seriousness of the work that we have to do in order to come close to Hashem. And throughout scriptures, the Tanakh, we have stories and examples that we can learn from how that we can live our life, how we should live our life. And that is really what he's saying, and that's what he says. He says, And, and you should also study Gemara, right, Talmud, Midrash, that you learn from the Chachami how we should live our lives. And he says, but you have to understand that learning Torah, not everyone's on the same level. There are multiple levels. And also in the way that you implement your moral development is also developmental. There are multiple levels. You can't ask somebody on this level to act like somebody on that level. You have to grow and grow, and move, and become better and better. So this is those of them, those of us who have achieved a very high level of Torah learning, right? He's called those people Shlemei Hadat, people who have perfection of their mind, of their knowledge. And so how do they, what would they take out, take from the Torah? He says, They would realize that they, really the only thing that they should ever desire is to become more complete and more perfect. That is the only goal that they should seek. That is what they would get. And they would notice, they will realize that all the mitzvahs and all of what they're, they, the Torah is teaching are means towards their perfection and hence they would never minimize performance of these aspects because they will lead them to the goal. So that if you knew that doing this mitzvah is going to bring you closer, right? there's an idea, there's an idea that by your performance of mitzvahs and not sinning, you move closer and closer to God. And it would be kind of like a, a, you know, a, a, an account, like an Excel file. You do a mitzvah, you move one step forward. You, do, you sin, you move one step backwards. Right? And you know, let's say one mitzvah can move you five steps forward. One sin can move you ten steps backwards. 
There are some mitzvahs that you perform that move you way up, and some sins that simply you cash in your chips and you're out. It's very serious. And so if you think about this and you look at those aspects, it's bringing you closer and closer to perfection, and by becoming a better person and a better person, you're coming closer and closer to God. Then you are not going to fall asleep on the job. Because you have a particular goal. You want to get from point A to point B. And to get from point A to point B, you know you're going to have to work for it. And by not working for it, not performing the mitzvahs, you are only harming yourself. You're only harming yourself. Okay. So that is at that level, the highest level. Now he says, and he gives examples. He says, you look at the, the lower level is called Yirat Chet. Yirat Chet, sorry, it's not a lower, it's a higher level than this. Yirat Chet is when you have fear of sin. That you are living a life where you are trying the hardest not to sin. And he says, this is Mishubachot Sheba Madrigot. It's one of the most praised uh, of the levels. Which is what? That you are, you've reached a level that you're always aware and worried that you will not sin. And that because you understand that the sin is going to be me'akev, it's going to be an obstacle in your perfection. And the question is, how do you solve that? Right? That is, but first you have to be aware of what you're doing. If a person doesn't know, can't move ahead. So, he continues, and he says that really, you have to keep in mind that in all the levels, you need siyayta dishmaya, you need God to help you. It's very hard to do this on your own. So, you say, okay, God, so why don't you start the process? doesn't work that way. You have to start the process yourself. You have to start the process yourself. You have to show that you are interested in your moral development. You have to do an act first. Once you do it, then Hashem will help you. That's how it works. You can't just say, you know, listen, you run the world, it's your world. I'm on the couch. When you're ready, just let me know. I'm ready to go anytime you are. doesn't work that way. You have to do the first, you have to take the first step. And that's what he says. The lowest level or the lower level, from the two that, that the Ramachal discusses, is that these people will understand from scriptures something a little different. What would they? They would understand that there is a world to come. And what happens in the world to come? Do you know what happens in the world to come? You get rewards. Upon it. You get rewards. That's what you think. You get judged. That's what you think. There was a couple. They retired. They're in their 70s. And they, you know, wanted to drive on Pacific uh, Highway Coast. You know, the, the Pacific Coast Highway. In California, they wanted to go from San Diego all the way up to San Francisco. And they were driving. And, you know, they lost control of the car. Flew off a cliff. And ended up before the heavenly tribunal. And they let them in. And they are waiting to be processed. And here comes this golf cart with an angel. And the angel says to them, all right, climb on. And there's another, there are the two couples. And he's, you know, they're sitting in the back and they're driving and they're driving by this huge mansion. Huge. With the grasses and trees and all this fruit trees. It's just unbelievable. And so the husband bumps his wife and says, wow, look at this. I wonder who lives here. And the angel says, comes up and says, come on, come on, come on, come with me. And they sort of follow the angel, and he brings them into the house, and they look. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he says um, to the angel, excuse me, who lives here? The angel shakes his head like this and says, it's you, it's your house. He says, well, what do you mean it's my house? I can't afford to pay. I don't, I, don't make, I don't make that kind of money. I'm retired. And the angel says, listen, this is heaven. Yeah, there's no payments. This is all yours. This is your house. Now, come on, let me show you around. And they're walking, and they come in, and there's a, there's a huge window, and there's a pool. And then there's 18-hole uh, golf course. 
And he says to the angel, so whose uh, golf course is this? He says, what do you mean? It's yours. He says, it's mine. What do you mean it's mine? He says, it's yours. He says, I can't afford the upkeep. Well, what's the green fees here? He says, nothing. It's yours. It's free. You can play. You don't need to mow. This is, this is unbelievable. And they go out to the pool and they see these two chefs are doing like omelets and pancakes and all those things flying in the air and there's a buffet. And the angel says, yeah, now you see this, they, they will make a buffet for you three times a day. You can eat as much as you want, all day, whatever you want. He says, no, I, I can't eat this stuff. I, I'm diabetic. And the guy says, what are you talking about? This is heaven. There's no heart blood pressure. There's no diabetes. There's nothing. You can eat whatever you want. The guy walks up to his wife and says, you and that granola bars, we could have been here for years. <laughs> All right, let's end the class. Mincha, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>